So yeah. So uh, one of the things that we've been trying to do since the start of MISP is to build a data format that kind of makes sense for the, what we're what we're doing with MISP. And this is something that we uh, this has evolved over time, but uh, something that we we've done in the beginning, not really consciously, but something that we're trying to do more and more consciously, uh, is to come up with a format or a design for the a data structure that is as little complex as possible to convey the information that we want to convey. So, uh, uh, and instead of just planning ahead and building something big outright, go for something small and then grow it organically. The format. So that means that if we see the need for something new that we haven't thought of before, just add it uh, on the fly when we get to that point. Uh, so we started out absolutely minimalistically with MISP, so it's a little bit hard to see. But our initial format, if anyone has been around in the MISP 1 days, I don't know if anyone has used MISP in MISP 1. Probably not, it was only a few organizations using it. Yeah, there we go, there's one person there. Uh, so basically, we had the event object, as we know it today, so our main container for data. We had attributes and we had correlations, and this was basically it. So it was an event with a flat list of attributes with very few fields, uh, with almost no distribution settings or anything fancy like that. We basically had a private flag and a not private. So not private means just distributed to everyone. Private means it's only for you. And that was basically it what we had uh, during those days. And this was something like five years ago, or so quite a while ago. But then, as we've already talked about, or as our excellent has presented, we've started reaching out to all these other communities. All these other users got on board. All these new features popped up. And we started seeing the need to increase this with more and more things. Uh, and over the past five years, it has been enhanced with all of these uh, various features. Uh, but what we haven't done during any point in the life cycle of MISP was to make any massive reholds of the data model at one point. So it was always something where we added something to it. Sometimes we removed stuff. Sometimes we realized that something that we did was utterly stupid, and then we went back on that. And it's a, a natural process of growing your standards. Uh, one, uh, something that uh, that allowed us, uh, uh, that this allowed us to do was to validate our design choices in very small uh, portions. So it means that we, when we enter the, a new table for a new feature, we got a lot of feedback on that thing before we moved on to other, uh, other uh, design decisions. Uh, this means that, uh, that we never had this feeling that we can't go back from, uh, from any of the features that we've implemented, uh, and it gave us a lot of flexibility. So if we compare it to the current data model of something that we share in this, it's rather massive and rather complex. Uh, so uh, just to clarify this, probably nobody besides me can see what's on here, so sorry about that. But to just give you a quick explanation, we have the event object here, down here, and then you have all the connected uh, things such as tags, taxonomies that the tags are derived from, galaxies. Then we have the objects that can contain attributes, proposals, uh, and <coughs> references to anything, some of the things that we've talked about. So this complexity has been raised uh, gradually over time, quite a bit. Uh, so why uh, bother with standard, uh, standardization uh, effort that we're working on right now at all? We've been getting more and more requests from other vendors and other tool makers that they would like to integrate with us. Um, so. Until now, in the beginning of MISP, the answer was, well, have a look at the code, have a look at what it outputs, and try to map to that, which was not exactly the most graceful way of handling it. Organizations struggled quite a bit with it, especially trying to navigate the jungle of PHP code that leads you to the various exports. So this was one of the main reasons. Another one was also getting validation on the format. So the moment that you present your entire format as a standard, or as a draft of a standard, you start getting feedback on it, which is also a very useful uh, tool for you to improve uh, the format that you're using. Uh, before I go on with this, something that I want to clarify is that we would misuse our own format internally. Uh, we, we don't plan to change that. 
We do, however, encourage and we support uh, the exchange through various specialized formats when it comes to feeding devices. We don't believe that we believe that the MIS format is great for exchanging data, but we don't believe, for example, that it's as great for feeding your IDS for, uh, or something like that. So for that, we we support specialized formats and we convert to those. But again, going back to it, uh, information exchange is what, what our aim is, and we believe that our format currently is doing quite okay with it. We had a look at what other things were out there when, uh, while further enhancing this, while considering how we can map to other formats. Initially, older age was about OCTA IOC back in 2012 and 2013. Uh, the only problem, of course, with that was that it's very focused on indicators, so it's very good at that, but it was quite limited to that scope. And then there is the most talked about exchange format out there right now, which is Sticks. I mean, if anyone had ever had to implement anything with Sticks, they probably know the pain that that can go, uh, go with, and Sticks 1 especially was a massive beast with a long list of tools at the time. And now it sticks to, we're kind of hoping that we can steer it in the right direction. So we're, as Alexander's mentioned, we're part of Oasis. We're also working on the effort of improving sticks to, and we fully intend to support it as, a, uh, as an alternate exchange format. However, we also realize that there are shortcomings that will never allow us, for example, to fully map everything that we have in this to sticks. So that means that our recommendation still is uh, use the MISP format if you want to build something that can map one to one with the data that we have in terms of financial indicators and so on. You will use the dual to map those by sticks. Uh, so yeah, uh, moving on to this. So uh, what are we doing with all of this now? So we have submitted IETF drafts uh, documents for uh, the MISP core format. So that is describing basically uh, what I've shown before, the big mob of uh, objects that, cont that are contained in the exchange in MISP, and also for the supporting formats that Alexander has talked about. So to quickly uh, reiterate what all of these formats are about, so the MISP core format is describing what an event, what an attribute, objects, tags, sharing groups, and so on uh, actually look like. So if you want to interact with this or just build your own tool based on the same uh, format, this is the one that you should be aiming for the core format. If you want to, uh, to, uh, to build something for the support format, and this is probably the part that is used most uh, from a standard perspective, uh, when people build their own galaxies, their own taxonomies, and so on. So these are the JSON formats that we uh, uh, des uh, describe in those documents. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, so the first one and again is, is if you want to uh, see the format that is used to exchange information between MISPs, that's the one that you should uh, use. Also, it is the format that you should expect when you're extracting data from MISP or when you want to feed uh, MISP with data. So if you're building a, a tool that simply fetches data from MISP in the MISP format, that's the one that you should. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, one one of the things that uh, that also popped up with the taxonomies and, uh, and the galaxy is was that we've ha had some other two uh, creators start using these formats in their own tools, completely uh, uh, detached from MISP itself. So, for example, uh, one of the ones that popped up was uh, uh, the ga uh, galaxies being uh, used uh, by involved uh, <coughs> in OTX. It also makes complete sense. <coughs> so they use those repositories, and for that, what we wanted to do is to make it easier on guys like them is to just have the whole standard described and how it works. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, one of the th the other things that popped up recently. Uh, was the whole MISP objects and the object template. So this is something that we've talked about briefly before. Uh, basically, uh, besides uh, supplying the software uh, part of the objects and implementation part and those templates that, uh, that come with the software by default, uh, we also want people to start creating their own templates. We will at one point uh, integrate the creation of the templates directly into MISP but we also want 
uh, other communities and other tools to build similar objects and use it in their own tools. So that will also make exchange easier for us if they have a similar way of describing things. So for that reason, uh, we, we've described uh, the format of the templates themselves. So if they want to create templates with any other tool, they can absolutely do that. Uh, another interesting thing that is contained uh, in this part of, of, of the uh, standard is the vocabulary uh, for relationships. Right now, we use this to connect objects to attributes objects to objects. But in the future, we're going to use this repository of uh, vocabularies also to reference um, um, uh, galaxies to each other. So, for example, if you have a threat actor, if you want to put <laughs> it somewhere, you can use this uh, vocabulary for that too. So, a little bit about the governance of the uh, MIST standard. So, basically, going back to governance model that Alexander already shown, we get input for, uh, from it from all over the place. So that can be GitHub, it can be trainings, presentations, and where we get feedback. Twitter, we've gotten quite a few ideas on, on how to enhance our standard via Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we do with this is we add, remove, and shift priorities based on what we think makes sense. Uh, if anyone has been around for 6.1 and how the standard was developed and how it came to be, it was controlled completely by Mitra at the time, and they've also taken external input. What will try to resist is the urge to give in to as much vendor pressure as they have at the time because maybe that was their biggest shortcoming as from an external point of view was that uh, they came to really silly to some vendor pressure on doing things the way that a specific vendor wanted it and it ended up being <coughs> able to describe the same thing in too many ways in the end. So we're trying to stay clear of that. But ultimately, what we're doing is a dictatorship. And we are firm believers that the only way that uh, the development of such a project <laughs> can happen successfully and in an agile way is through a dictatorship. And this brings us to the next point. Recently, we've been, as mentioned, involved with the Sticks 2 uh, uh, effort with Oasis. Uh, and what we've noticed was uh, uh, that it was basically dragged down by this horribly cumbersome bureaucratic process uh, with absolutely no flexibility. I mean, getting minor changes in can take half a year or something like that. We've been trying to fight for, the flag. for a flag, basically, on an object for the past half a year. It's been... So the missing hair patch on my hand comes from that. <laughs> uh, so... It's, it's, it's something that we want to stay clear of. Another thing is that, and this has come up very often during the entire uh, process of uh, uh, with Sticks 2, was that whenever something is, even by the community, deemed as a bad decision that was taken initially, uh, there seems to be a very strong objection to going back and making changes to those previous uh, consensus-based decisions. Because it was already agreed, we, we will not go back and not change it, even when the first implementations are starting to come in and people realize it was a mistake. So this is something that is very scary to us, and this is also a reason why we want to keep it in this dictatorship direction. And then again, another thing, and this is something that we're noticing, is vendors are pushing a lot of requirements that fit their products only, and it kind of excludes the use case for a lot of others, but as long as they can get that in, it's fine. And there's also a, and, and, and due to this, these vendors seem to be a little bit overrepresented sometimes with these efforts. They can put people full time on, on basically being present in, in these discussions and pushing hard for the ideas that they have. And in the end, it does turn into a dishonest dictatorship this way. So you have the appearance of a, an open process, but in reality, it's not what happens. So yeah. So, just to quickly recap the whole thing, we are a dictatorship, as said before, but our success basically is based on the feedback. So if we would have not taken any of the feedback that we've gotten into consideration, we would be still in that initial draft with almost nothing that we're, uh, we're sharing. So please make sure that you let us know if you have any ideas or if you want to make any changes. Uh, for the documents uh, for the RFC, you can find them on GitHub. Uh, or you can also find, I didn't link to that on uh, the IETF uh, website where we've uh, published the drafts. Uh, 
but on GitHub, feel free to open an issue uh, that, uh, that you see with the, uh, with the uh, documents themselves. Also, if you're implementing it and you're noticing that something is incorrect, we have this sentiment of, of the code being low. Uh, so we generally try to ad ad adopt uh, up the standards to that. Uh, but some, sometimes we make, or not sometimes, but quite often we make mistakes in that too. So if you if you find something in the standard that doesn't make sense to the actual implementation, this there are found two mistakes in that. Open them as issues in February on the RMC. Ah, okay. I didn't see those. So. No, you see them. I have seen those. Okay. okay, interesting. So we can have a look at those and, and we can fix those. So that's great. So, yeah, indeed, that's what you should do. I mean, lately we've been a little bit. Swap then it goes around that we tr we'll try to get around to all of it. So yeah, that's about it for the standard part. Does anyone have any questions about this part? Okay, so okay.